Welcome to The Chem Doctor, and this is the fourth video in the series on Beer's Law. And what we're going to do here is uh, simulate an actual experiment. Now, I need to say that, that the data that we're going to look at um, was uh, acquired by me doing the actual experiment. And now what we're going to do, essentially, is I'm going to explain how I did the experiment, and then we're going to look at how I analyzed uh, my own data. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So in the laboratory, you might have had a situation like this where your instructor comes in and presents you uh, with two samples. All right, one of the two samples uh, is an unknown solution. And what I mean by that is that uh, it, this might be a solution of copper sulfate, and that's what my example here is going to be based on, uh, that has an unknown molarity. All right, so we don't know what the concentration of this is, which is fairly usual in a laboratory. So I want to remind the viewer this is not some kind of arbitrary experiment that's done to torture chemistry students. Uh, the Beer's Law type of an experiment using the spectrophotometer is uh, usual in, in research labs, especially in the area of biochemistry where you're quantitating protein, uh, DNA, and RNA solutions, and so on. So this is an important skill that's utilized quite often uh, in benchtop chemistry. So you have this unknown solution. It's copper sulfate in my example. We don't know the molarity for it. All right, and then the other solution that we're presented with is also copper sulfate, but we know the concentration of it. All right, it's, and in this case, it's going to be 0.5 molar copper sulfate. So we have a solution two solutions that have the same substance in it. One solution we know the molarity for and one solution we don't. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the known solution and we're going to make a series of serial dilutions because we need more than one sample in order to generate, again remember what we're going to do here is generate a standard curve uh, and the standard curve is going to represent I'll just put a rough schematic over here on the side, all right? The standard curve is going to give us the absorbance at copper sulfate's lambda max, which is 620, 620 nanometers. Uh, so it's going to be absorbance of the substance versus its molarity in units of moles per liter. Now, in the real world, the concentration unit here is going to be unique to whatever type of system you're in. If we were characterizing proteins right now, it would probably be in milligrams per mil, or it could even be micromoles. Whatever the case, we need to generate a standard curve, which means we need to, to uh, change our 0.5 molar copper sulfate solution into a range of different concentrations. We're going to take the absorbances of that, and uh, we should be able to get a straight line. And then what we're going to do is measure our unknown, which hopefully is going to come in somewhere within the line. We just literally walk over to the line and down, and voila, we have the concentration of the unknown. That's the idea here, all right? So the first thing I'm going to do is take you through how I do my serial dilutions. So what I'm going to do is set up a total. I'm going to move this guy down, all right? So here's my, what I call my 1x, and it is uh, 0.5 molar of the copper sulfate. I'm going to set up a total of uh, four more tubes in advance, all right? And I'm going to assume that we have six milliliters of total uh, copper sulfate solution to work with here. Whoops, I shouldn't, I shouldn't do that. I'll keep the, the color uh, consistent. So we have copper sulfate, six milliliters of it. All right, I'm going to set up uh, a total of, I'll have five tubes total. I need to set up four more. Okay, and into each tube, and remember, you should be watching this in sequence. So this is the fourth video, and if you just are walking into this, you may find what we're doing to be too fast. And what I recommend is you go back and uh, watch the videos in sequence. And then what I'm going to do before I uh, carry out any other operation here 
is I'm going to put three milliliters of distilled water into each of my tubes because what I'm going to do in my cereal dilutions, the way I prefer to do this, is I'm going to take this original half molar and I'm going to cut the concentration in one half each round of dilution. All right. So what I'm what I've done here is I've placed three milliliters of distilled water into each of my tubes in preparation for this. All right, and then I'm going to transfer. I'll change the color of that. Three milliliters of my original solution is going to go into the first tube, and then, um, and don't worry, I'm going to go through this exactly the way I do the experiment. But each round is going to involve transferring three mils again. So, the the total volume of of each uh, dilution is going to be six milliliters. So the 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 vol the total volume is going to remain constant all the way across here. Now. From a practical point of view, I'm going to also tell you exactly how I do this experiment. So what we're going to do first is, and we're going to need a graph here so or a table. So let's get that out of the way. Over here is going to be my copper sulfate concentration, and then we're going to need the A620 here. All right. So what I'm going to do first is, before I, I actually make any transfers at all, I'm going to go ahead and measure the uh, A620 of the half molar solution. And the way I do that, let's see, I think I'll put it down here first. Make sure that you blank the instrument well. Like if you're using a, a Spec 20 in the lab for this, I usually am going to blank that instrument two or three times and make sure that, that the instrument's well blanked. So for that, you literally can use set yourself up another tube with six mils of uh, distilled water in it. Okay, and this is going to be the same no matter what the substance is here because usually in a teaching lab they're going to do this with either the copper sulfate or something like cobalt chloride and this technique is going to work fine for that. If you're in a biochemistry lab this six mils of DH2O it may be a buffer of some kind or, and it may even have other additives in it. So you have to pay attention to what your system is. But in general, you're going to blank the instrument. And then what I'm going to do is transfer my tubes and put the half molar in. So my 0.5 molar goes here, all right, and get my A620. Once I have established the absorbance for for the half molar and let's go ahead and put that in over here so for my half molar uh, concentration my absorbance and I did this for reals is 0 0.930 for the absorbance so once I've taken the absorbance here then I pull that tube out of the spectrophotometer and automatically put your blank back in it and I ask the machine right then and there, I push the button and I blank it and I leave the, instru the instrument blanked. Then we come back up, he up here and what I'm going to do now is transfer three milliliters out of my half molar solution into my first tube here that already contains three milliliters. All right, bringing the total to six. All right, now the total is at six. You need to mix this. I do it using a little piece of parafilm sealed over the top of the tube with my finger and invert the tube several times and mix it. All right. Then what I do is I come back to the instrument and re-blank it. All right. Once the instrument has settled out, then I, I exchange the blank from, for my sample and then I go ahead and get my A620. All right. And for that one, remember, okay. So what did we do on the dilution here? We went from three mils to six. And remember in the serial uh, dilution um, video, that's the same as the, whoops, that's the same as six over three. We went to six mils from three, and that is a two-fold dilution. That means that this concentration, the new one right here, is going to be uh, one half of the original concentration. All right. So another way to have looked at this would be three over six. All right. We we took three mils. We adjusted to six. That means the new solution has to be one half the original. All right. That's how this is working. 
And when we look at the actual data that I got, all right, so we've cut the, the concentration in half. My absorbance is uh, 0 0.453. And like I said, this is real data. All right, I did this in the laboratory uh, just the other day so that we could do this video together. All right, so then remember, I have six mils here. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to transfer three mils of that solution after having gotten the A620 into my, into my new tube. And we repeat the process. This solution is going to be one half of that solution. So my new concentration here is going to be point. Uh, 125 if you've done the dilution correctly and then we go through this whole process again we've got six mils here it needs to be mixed well right uh, I use parafilm over the top of the tube and then remember you've already got the blank placed back inside the instrument you and and I've already re-blanked it but just before I take this reading I will blank it again um, and the reason I do so much blanking with this is because spec 20s tend to drift a lot in their values. So you should be really anal about the blanking. And then I'm going to take my A620 again. And for this one I got um, 0 0.221. All right, and we keep repeating this process. All right, so I'm going to move another 3 milliliters. It's going to be one half the concentration uh, we're going to be uh, one half of what we were here, all right. And we're going to have six milliliters, all right. We're going to mix. We're going to mix it well by capping off the top. We will have blanked the instrument a couple of times, and we get another A620, all right. And in this case, it's going to be my new concentration is going to be 0 0.0625, and my new concentration is, or my new absorbance is 0.0. 116. All right, and the, the final one that I'm going to get here, again, it's done exactly the same way. There's no change. All right, we transfer another three mils. We mix, mix, mix. All right, and then we take our A620 after, after uh, blanking the instrument a few times, and my last value is going to be, um, should be 0 0.0. Uh, three one two five and I'm not paying any attention to sig figs here by the way and then my absorbance is going to be 0 0.077 all right now once I have established my data table then what I'm going to do is go ahead and and plot this data remember we haven't measured this guy yet and I do this whole operation in, in literally one experiment. So this guy is sitting right now at the spectrophotometer, ready to go. All right. And but first, I'm going to plot this data. And, and you should uh, use either a, a graphing calculator or some type of graphing program on, on, your, uh, on your computer to do this. And you want to analyze it and make sure that your correlation factor is, is really, really tight for this, all right? So what we're going to do is shift to another screen where you can actually look at my data. All right, and here, here is the data that we were just looking at uh, that has been graphed on a statistical package. Um, my um, correlation factor for this is actually 0 0.9994. All right, this is my correlation. And that is really, really good. You should be able to do the same thing in your hands with something like cobalt chloride or copper sulfate. You know, um, this isn't going to be true like in a, a biochem lab with a protein solution, but because those are very, very difficult. But in the case of, of a regular chemistry lab or university level general chem where you're doing this with, with a simple substance, your correlation factor should be really good. If it isn't, it's because you messed the dilutions up and you should go back and then redo everything, all right? So let me, let's me let bring this home now. So I've plotted the data. You can see yourself. It plotted really, really well. This is, this uh, uh, just, just in case, this is a curve fit. So, so the line has not been drawn through the points. It's been drawn between the points. My correlation factor is excellent. This is the y is equal to mxb, um, or uh, this is my y is equal to mx plus b 
equation for this line, notice that my uh, y-intercept is, is, is fairly small. It should be because technically speaking, the line should be running through the zero, zero mark. Now, let's get back to, the, to what the original challenge was. So here's my unknown. All right, and it has uh, a solution of copper sulfate in it for which I do not know the concentration. So it's an unknown uh, molarity. All right, and all right, and again, this is already sitting next to my instrument, which is warmed up, and I I I, I have just completed uh, doing the standard curve. I'm looking at my my data here, so now what I do is I make sure that my instrument is I have it blanked. All right, I insert sample. Make sure this is clear. In fact, maybe I'll get rid of this arrow. Sorry, I don't mean to suggest that you put your actual unknown in there and then blank it. You're going to blank to DH2O. You insert the sample, um, and you get your A620. All right, so for the sake of argument, um, let's say that my A620 here for this thing uh, was... Uh, and uh, let's see, what was it? Um, my value for this was uh, 0 0.362 is my A620 for my unknown. So now you take that value and you plug it into your uh, y is equal to mx plus b curve and what we get for the concentration of my unknown is 0 0.195 molar for the unknown molarity of the copper sulfate solution all right and and this is good it came in some you know into the uh, well into the linear portion of my um, of my curve this is just what I did did right here is just a it's it's a rough schematic it's not exactly where 0.362 is all right the number is real and I use y is equal to mx plus b in order to do my calculation all right so this wraps up the series on, on uh, generating a standard curve using Beer's Law. There's a total of four videos. Uh, watch them in sequence is the best thing. Thanks for, for taking the time to watch my video. You can find more at www.chemdoctor.org.